Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, we've been talking about assessing the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you know, last week we talked about the, the attitude that helps you assess the knowledge of God. Now, we're going beyond that. And I've been sharing with you from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. It says, let the wicked man forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him turn to the Lord, for he will have mercy upon him. And I told you the greatest gift that God has given to us, or ability that God has given to us, is the ability to repent. What does it mean to repent? Forsake your old ways to the new. Now, I just sense in my spirit that I should talk about marriage a little bit. See, now, you, you want to get married, or maybe you're already married, or maybe you're even having challenges in, in your marriage. And then, you know, all kinds of thoughts will be going into your mind. Now, you know the beauty about life? There are certain things in life that you can never predict. For example, you can never predict accurately the behavior of someone over time, no matter how you have known the person, because people do change. So, somebody today may have dislikes, but an event can happen tomorrow that would transform that person's likes to something else. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> and, and you find yourself in a situation where someone says, oh, me, I like um, this kind of men or I like this kind of women. And then something happens and then uh, you see the person with someone and you're like, I thought you said, ah, leave that, you know, I, I've learned in life or I've learned something. <laughs> you see? Why? And, and, and that's why. <clears throat> Listen, I will share this. Now, you want to get married and you have desires. There is nothing wrong with having desires. Nothing wrong at all. Nothing. They are the expression of your thoughts to your maker. See, as long as you don't put the burden of those desires on a man, on a human being, there is nothing wrong with having those desires. If your desire is to fly wherever, put it on the Lord and tell him, this is what I feel. This is what I like. This is what I want. But you see, in making decisions, don't let those desires guide you. Let the word of God guide you. I found this out. And, 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 and this is the truth. You may tell the Lord, Lord, I want to marry a tall, handsome, rich, whatever you call it, man or woman or whatever. That's fine. You can write it somewhere. You can take it before. You can carry it everywhere in your pocket. Anytime they are praying, Father, remember my desire. Remember my heart desire. It's not a problem. <laughs> Praise God. But you see, when it comes to making a choice, who to get married to, don't let those desires guide your physical choice. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you go before the Lord, maybe you're a lady, and suddenly someone starts coming around. And you are beginning to think, oh, but this person doesn't fit into... Uh, you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know why this person has just been on my case. Uh, you know, I, I, I realize something that my life, I'm not alone in this life. So I want to inquire from you, Lord. Do you know him? Are you sending him on this mission? Is this his purpose? And then you pray like that. Now, if the Lord tells you, someone says, forget those things. The Lord does not choose husband for you. <laughs> that is a wicked thought. The Lord will not sit you down and say, this is your wife or this is your husband. But you see, if you go before him and inquire of him, he will open up his heart to you where everybody is concerned. Same thing with the wife, same thing with business partners, whatever, relationship-wise. He will talk to you about it. So, so you go before the Lord and say, Lord, truly I want to know. You know, if you don't tell me anything, I can't do anything. And then the Lord tells you, go ahead. Go ahead with him. And he gives you direction. And then you say, Lord, why now? Oh, God. But, but remember what I told you. I told you I wanted somebody who's like this, somebody who's like that. 
But you know that the Lord is saying, this is it. Go ahead. Now, believe the Lord against all else. But let me tell you this. While believing the Lord, don't throw away those desires. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you look at this, say, I told the Lord I wanted someone who's, who's rich, at least someone that has two cars, so that uh, from the day we get married, he'll give me one car. Me, I don't have a car. It, there's nothing wrong with that desire. Nothing at all. It's a desire. But you see, when the Lord said, that's the person, don't look at this. Ah, this one, one car self, he doesn't even have. Even Uber says, it takes a long. <laughs> you know? And I say, oh God, this is not what I asked you for. Hey, hey. Relax. If you are smart, you will, if the Lord tells you that's the person, you will say, okay, Lord, so this is the person that is going to have more than a car. And so he will buy one for me. So this is the person that's going to get these things done, you know. Or this is the person with whom, that's actually how to talk about it, with whom we're going to get these things done, all these desires that I have. Thank you, Lord. You know, Lord, I believe you. And I know your thoughts concerning me are good. And now you don't go to the person and say, let me tell you, this is what I told God. I told God that my husband must have two cars. <laughs> no. You, you, you can share it with the person in form of a testimony and an expression of faith, but not as, 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 as putting pressure on the person and say, are you sure you are the person? You better think well. Though. No. You tell him, you know what? I, I believe God before we get married, we'll have two cars. <laughs> okay. He said, yes, just, 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 don't, just believe God with me. Okay, I believe God with you. And eventually, something happens and that comes to pass. Oh, let me tell you the truth. You know, I look at marriages. I look at young people getting married. And, and I hear their struggles sometimes. I just know the problem. And it's very simple. The problem is this. Either both of them or one of them is really not working in faith where marriage is concerned. Marriage takes faith to work it. Oh, it takes faith to work it. Now, when I say faith to work it, don't, don't start hearing in your heart hard work to work it. No, not hard work in that sense. Marriage takes faith to work it. Now, I'll assure you this. Next week, we are going to be talking about, I mean, I'm going to spend time talking about marriage and every other thing the Lord is going to lead us to talk about. Praise God. Because I've got to stop here because it's Friday. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, let this weekend open up God's blessings to you. And I pray that the Lord will connect you to something that's going to be a blessing to your life this weekend. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold up your head high. God loves you. Bye-bye.